let's quickly touch on what exactly depository institutions are and what they do. A depository institution is a financial firm that takes deposits from households and firms. Charter banks are private firms that are allowed to receive deposits and make loans. Here in Canada, they include TD Bank, RBC, CIBC, Bank of Montreal, etc. etc. Credit unions are cooperative institutions that receive deposits from and makes loans to its members. Trust and mortgage loan companies are also privately owned depository institutions, but they receive deposits, they make loans, and they act as trustees for pension funds and estates. All of the above mentioned institutions in these following videos will be called banks because their functions have become increasingly similar. Um, if you're a little unclear on these depository institutions, you can go ahead and click on the annotation on the screen right now. That'll take you back to a previous video in which I've discussed these depository institutions in a little bit more detail. Depository institutions provide services such as check clearing, account management, um, credit cards, internet banking, and they earn a part of their income by charging for these services. But most of their income that they earn is actually from using the funds that they re re receive as deposits to make loans and buy securities that earn them a higher interest rate than is paid to depositors. A charter bank puts its funds into reserves, liquid assets, securities, loans. Reserves are notes and coins in the institution's vault or its deposit account at the central bank. Liquid assets include government treasury bills and commercial bills, and they can be sold instantly and converted into reserves with a low risk of loss, and thus, they actually have a low rate of interest due to the security. Securities include government and other bonds, and they can be converted into reserves, but prices do fluctuate. These assets are riskier than liquid assets, but they do have a higher rate of interest. Loans are commitments of funds uh, for an agreed upon period of time. They are used to finance the purchase of capital, homes, durable or expensive goods, um, even credit cards are an example of loans. These are the riskiest type of assets for banks and financial institutions as they cannot actually be converted into reserves until they are due to be repaid. Thus, they can charge the highest rate of interest for this particular type of investment. Financial institutions, sorry, depository institutions, create liquidity. They do this by borrowing short and lending long. They take deposits and they're standing ready to repay them on short notice while they still make long-term long -term loan commitments. They also pool risk. The more people that money is loaned out to, the less of a difference it'll make if one person defaults on this loan because the cumulative interest paid by all the other borrowers can actually cover the default of that one person. Financial institutions also lower the cost of borrowing. Surge time is reduced as a firm can get the full amount of its loan from one financial institution instead of looking for individual lenders to lend partial amounts. But depository institutions also lower the cost of monitoring borrowers. If a household, for example, lends a firm money, then each individual house household that the firm has borrowed money from would have to spend large amounts of money to monitor the firm in order to make sure that it's making financially sound decisions and won't go bankrupt. But with a large financial institution, the cost is reduced because you only have one institution that actually needs to pay this cost of monitoring. The goal of financial regulation is to identify, evaluate, and lessen the consequences of financial risk. The central bank ensures that commercial banks and other institutions have adequate liquidity, and it does this by providing general guidance and knowledge to these commercial banks. It also actually provides advice to the government as well.